In our faces, no subliminal. And what they doing to that mound so criminal. Destroying acres of sacred mountains so they could look There you go, I'm John Keane, and I welcome you to Let's Talk on this Sunday, July 21st. While this program may not provide a path to spiritual enlightenment, we do encourage, and in some cases, uh, start conversations. We don't do prayers or buffalo speeches. We take a tough look at our history, oppression, survival. We talk about culture, the arts, politics, identity, and we do step on a few toes along the way. But our real goal here is to bring people together by breaking down what separates us. We will take on the false narratives and provide critical thinking to all that is heaped upon us. And we do it all right here from the Seneca Nation, the Cataraugus <laughs> territory of the Seneca Nation. So let's talk native. But first, let me remind people that you can catch the show on our uh, web, uh, website, which is www letstalknative.com. We stream video of the show on our uh, 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 Facebook group pages. So we stream it on, and we stream it on, uh, um, on Facebook. We take the audio and we put it up on SoundCloud so it is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. And we take the video and we put it up on our YouTube channel, which is uh, Let's Talk Native TV. And I, again, I encourage people to, to share and to comment and to weigh in on the conversations that we have here. Now today, and I've, uh, well, first off, let me, let me uh, introduce uh, uh, the other folk, the other gentleman sitting, sitting here with me is uh, Ed Schindler. I want to welcome Ed to the show. I know, Ed, you were going to do a couple of shows uh, before, you, uh, before you leave us, so again, for a, a little bit, a bit of a stint. Um, so I want to thank you for, for joining us these, these several weeks. Um, and I also want to mention people that uh, I've got uh, Jake Proud here in studio who's managing our, our audio and our video. Um, again, I am John Kane. I am the host of Let's Talk Native, and that's what we're going to do right now. Um, I think to, to, I, we have to address what's probably many people may not even be aware of, it, but there are protests happening all over, um, for lack of a better word, the United States. <laughs> and, and I have to use that term liberally because... Uh, one of the places that uh, that I'm going to talk about is uh, is Hawaii, that I refer to as the Kingdom of Hawaii, not the State of Hawaii. So we're going to talk about Hawaii and and the battles that are happening there, all over the islands, but also on the continent too, about um, the effort to put a 30 meter telescope on the top of Mauna Kea, their most sacred site, essentially on uh, in Hawaii, is their 14,000 foot mountain, Mauna Kea. And, and we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Mauna Kea as we go, but let me kind of give you an overview on, on the other protests that are happening. The other one I'm going to talk about is Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, there have been hundreds of thousands of people that have come out um, calling for the resignation of uh, uh, Ricardo uh, Rosello, the, the governor of Puerto Rico. A guy totally surrounded by controversy because of his um, uh, of his messages, his text message messages, and some of the statements that he's tried to uh, make in private that have gone public, which do everything from insult women to uh, gay people to uh, folks have, who died in Hurricane Maria. The guy has just said the most atrocious things you could imagine. And uh, and, and the, uh, even people who supported this guy, this isn't even a, bip this isn't even a partisan thing. This is a grassroots movement that is, you know, taken on a, you know, huge proportions. And if, in fact, people have actually gone to Puerto Rico specifically to to protest. Even, you know, performers. I mean, uh, uh, recording artists have, have showed up, uh, and not even just Puerto Rican folks. Of people of Puerto Rican heritage, there are people who are showing up there, you know, really calling for this guy to, you know, to leave office. And, and of course, he's, you know, he's controversial for for other areas, you know. You know other charges of corruption as well, which have been plaguing you know Puerto Rico and th those who have sold out to the corporate interests of the United States, and and this guy uh, Ricardo Rosello fits right in there with that. So, um, so massive protests happening in Puerto Rico, and of course the 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 other and and the the third uh, set of uh, protests I want to talk about uh, is essentially an 11-day protest that started last week uh, in New York City over 
frankly, over the over the murder of Eric Garner and the fact that, that the the William Barr U.S. Justice Department has failed to uh, bring cr- any criminal charges uh, after the, the state already failed to do so. They said they they couldn't. Um, they didn't feel they could get a prosecution for any criminal offense associated with the choking to death of, uh, of, uh, of Eric Garner by Officer Pantaleo. I mean, in spite of the video, in, in, in spite of eyewitness reports, in spite of, and, and the five other officers, by the way, who they won't even name. So we're going to talk about the New York City uh, protests. We're going to talk about the Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico protests. And, uh, but I want to start off with, uh, with, uh, with Hawaii. Um, I've got my East Side Pride shirt on. Um, I've got uh, our Mauna Kea flag flying behind me, and uh, and of course I um, I also have my uh, my pr- uh, protector of Mauna Kea uh, uh, shirt hanging on the wall, just to kind of show my my support for what's happening. Now, for those of you who don't know, the the there's a couple of battles going on in in Hawaii, and and have been, and and these battles are really tied to um, on on one level. The independence movement, the fact that Hawaii was never legally annexed by the United States, in, in fact, the, the process was flawed at several levels. I mean, and it was so flawed that during the Clinton administration, they actually apologized. During the Bill Clinton administration, they, 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 um, there was a joint resolution of Congress apologizing, not correcting it, mind you, but, but apologizing for the illegal uh, annexation, or, you know, or claim uh, to, to uh, acquisition, I guess, of, of Hawaii as a U.S. territory. It would become, it would be uh, converted to a state in uh, 1959. But um, it was taken, you know, 50 years prior to that, you know, uh, at the, almost the, the turn of the century anyway. Um, and that battle still, still rages on. But as a part of that battle, there's all kinds of issues about land and land use and, and you know, who owns it, um, you know, who owns what. There are some lands that are considered kingdom lands. And Mauna Kea, which is, again, this 14,000-foot mountain that you know, rises literally from, from the sea. Um, I mean, it's a volcanic island has some unique characteristics. And one of the most unique characteristics is because of where it is, so far in the, in the middle of the Pacific, that it, it provides um, an uncanny view of, uh, for stargazers. Uh, there's you know, no light pollution. It, you know, the, you know, the, the atmosphere is clear. The, the weather systems are clear. And for that reason, there has always been a desire to, uh, to set up some sort of observatories you know, or a series of, of observatories on the top of Mauna Kea. Which kind of gets to a bit of a problem because, and 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 I got to bring this up. There's this whole idea of uh, the cautionary tale that should go along with with whenever we give something up, and and frankly, the University of Hawaii uh, pulled off building um, telescopes on the top of Mauna Kea. There's actually 13 of them up there already, smaller ones, but with every inch that they that they were given to do something. They did more. Now, and I got to be clear here. The Hawaiian people are not anti-science. They're not anti-astronomy. They're, they're not against the whole notion of, you know, look, uh, th- there have been some that try to liken this whole idea of building observatories on the top of the mountain as somehow the next step of, the, of that Voyager spirit of, the, of, of Polynesians and, and Hawaiians and all that stuff. Of course, the Hawaiians are having it. They're saying, yeah, we have a, we have a Voyager spirit all right. But the idea of desecrating one of our sacred sites is not is not a part of you know our warrior spirit and or our voyager spirit as they say. So this is really about protecting their lands, which the Hawaiians have had a hard time doing. You have to understand that the military has a huge presence on uh, on the Hawaiian islands. In fact, one of the islands they just blow the crap out of. They they use it for target practice. They they fire. You know the, all these these armaments. They and look, the military presence has done everything from destroying some of the ecosystems associated with the ocean, destroying the ecosystems associated with land. And of course, the tourism industry, and frankly, the colonization of Hawaii has destroyed ecosystems. There, I mean, the, you know, one of the first things that that happened with not just uh, the United States. Uh, their illegal annexation of, of Hawaii, but but even the inundation of people who wanted to, you know, enjoy this tropical paradise. Even as the Kingdom of Hawaii allowed 
non-Hawaiians, essentially, to become citizens or subjects of the kingdom. I mean, the, the first coup that, you know, that, would, uh, that would led to this illegal annexation was from Hawaiian subjects. Now, they weren't native Hawaiian now. These were, these were people who, some of them were born there. They're not, they weren't native Hawaiians, but they were born there as, uh, you know, and, and they were born and they lived as subjects of the Hawaiian kingdom, but they were white. And they said, no, we, we, we're going we're gonna to get rid of the kingdom and we're going to call ourselves a republic. And that's how the, the whole thing happens. Now, one of the things that, that I think is comp being born out of this battle to stop, let me, let me re regroup, I guess. So they, they already have 13 telescopes on the top of this mountain. And so there became this big push to put a 30-meter telescope. Now, I don't know if you can picture a, a telescope. And when I, they say 30 meters, that's, that's the size of the mirror, essentially, that uh, is associated with this, these telescopes, the lens, essentially. I mean, it's huge. I mean, we're talking about a building that would be, you know, some, somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, uh, 8 to 20 stories high, and, you know, and it was going to have this huge underground infrastructure. I mean, this was going to be a major excavation um, of, of the top of the mountain. It was, uh, it was a major build. In fact, it's a build that is so big that it violates all of the, the, the state of Hawaii's building codes. It would vi violate all those building codes. Because keep in mind, this is on top of a volcanic island. And in fact, it is the most active volcanic island. And Mauna Kea, while it may not be remain a, an active volcano, the island, all the lava flows that were taking place last year and the year before, that was all just east of Mauna, Mauna Kea on the, what they call the Hilo section of, of the Big Island. So this is an act, you know, there, there are tremors there all the time, and, and there are active volcanoes on, on this very island. So there are strict codes about what you can build, and they looked all the other way on, on this thing. And so this, is being, this has been opposed for years by, you know, at first more of a grassroots um, level, uh, some of the more traditional, I guess, uh, Hawaiians. But over time, more and more people have gotten involved in this thing. And while this fight over Mauna Kea was not necessarily the same fight as the, the fight to assert the Hawaiian kingdom and, uh, and the, you know, to, to, to fight the illegal annexation and occupation of Hawaii, those two battles have come together because... I think some of the folks f trying to protect the mountain are coming to realize that unless they assert the bigger picture is that, and, and that being that, that the people of Hawaii um, need to have more control over, the, over, their, uh, over their, their kingdom lands. Um, so th that's, how the, that's how the battle is, 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 is kind of shaping up. But because it is by many, in, in many regards, the, the final leg of, of resistance uh, in terms of court actions have cleared the way for the building of this, uh, of this, this 30 meter telescope. It has come down to just the, the sheer will of people to oppose it. And so now people are stepping up and, and on uh, all the islands of, uh, of, of Hawaii, there, there are people stepping up, but on the continent here, across, in particular across native territories, there are people, um, Standing Rock and places all over are stepping up and, they're, and they're, everybody is joining in this protest against building this 30 meter telescope on the top of, uh, of Mauna Kea. This, you know, and, and look, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, I don't personally um, put as much um, significance on one particular site over another. So the whole sacred site things, that's not necessarily my... Um, uh, m you know, my fight, because I think, you know, I, I come from the old school that says what part of my mother is more sacred than another, okay? <laughs> now, yeah. But that's my belief. The, the fact of the matter is that the, the, the Ganaka Maoli, the people of Hawaii, they, uh, you almost can't, cannot not be in awe of what Mauna Kea is because it is, uh, it is such a significant um I mean, it rises so far off the off the water, and, and and anybody who's been there, I mean, look, you start the oxygen levels. I mean, the the, the climate, everything. The mo the mountain provides a completely different scenario than the rest of the islands, and so I get it, and and so it's regarded with with much much reverence, and and to the point where it is considered the most sacred site among the Hawaiian people on uh, on the island. So, so I get it. 
but um, this is why they feel so strongly. And and I can't and, and I and I and I can't ignore the fact that the fact that there was a certain concession to allow the smaller telescopes put up there, instead of realizing, okay, well, we'll give in a little. You know, look, these, you know, we'll let you build a telescope. Well, that letting you build a telescope has turned into 13 of them. And now, once you give that inch, you know, the proverbial give an inch, they'll, t they'll take a mile. That's exactly what's happening here. And, and the fact that you, you've got, and this isn't just a Hawaii, a state of Hawaii thing. This is an international coalition that has come together to build this thing. Because, uh, again, it's not the only place on the, uh, on the planet that this telescope, w you know, would be a good fit from a, you know, from a, uh, a view of the sky standpoint. I mean, there's places in South America. There's places in Japan. They talk about Mount Fuji and a few other, uh, other places that would be absolutely appropriate for this. And the Hawaiians are saying, do it there. And, you know, of course, then the argument is, well, yeah, but this will provide jobs. And, you know, they're talking about, you know, hundreds of jobs, not mm. thousands of jobs, but hundreds of jobs. And the average Hawaiian, especially the ones who need the job, they're, they're going to import most of those people. The bottom line is they're, they're, they're going to take them from the military or they'll bring in, you know, acad uh, academics from, you know, from, you know, other universities or other, you know, science departments. It's not going to provide a great deal of employment to the Hawaiian people. It's not going to be provide this huge economic impact. But, but even if it did, the bottom line is the people there say no. We don't want it. That this this mountain is special to us, and we don't want you building this this you know eight hundred pound gorilla in this room. This is our this is our mountain, and and that's why people have uh, have stood up against it so much. And 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 I've talked about this on this show and on my show in New York many times. But sometimes. I have found it difficult to take the conversation about resisting the 30 meter telescope and meld it with the, the uh, you know, the, the fight against the illegal occupation of Hawaii. That's been a, a, a difficult conversation to have because some people didn't want to mix those two things. I think, and I, I want to even say that it's out of desperation, but I, want, I think today there are many more people who are saying, no. We, we fight this. We, we don't even acknowledge this, that the state of Hawaii has the authority that they're asserting because it's a fake state. And, you know, so even some of the people who weren't taking on the kingdom argument and the illegal occupation argument are now grabbing that argument as a part of this fight against the, uh, um, against the 30 meter telescope, which is, you know, and the point that I got to make there is for those of you in, uh, who, uh, who, who have tried to dismiss those people claiming this illegal occupation and thought you could just push through and do the 30 meter telescope, look what you've done. Look what you've done. You, you've opened up a can of worms. You've actually, you know, so many times this happens. You've created unity uh, uh, on an issue where unity may not have been there, at least not at this level. I mean, I got to be clear here. There are thousands of Hawaiians, you know, tens of thousands of Hawaiians who um, are against. Um, who are still protesting the illegal occupation of Hawaii. Most people don't realize, but there's, most Hawaiians can't even afford to live in Hawaii. The military has driven up the cost of everything. The, the tourism has driven up the cost of everything. They've not only changed the ecosystem, but they've, they, they've changed the economic system there. You know, so you've got the, basically the native Hawaiians who are expected to be you know, the menial or, the, or the, the token Hawaiians for the tourism industry. Well, all you pretty girls put on your coconut bras and dance for the white folk, that kind of stuff. That's literally, I mean, that's not even a joke. I mean, it's, it's an, it, it is an absurd joke, but it's a reality. So you've got, you know, we're, we're just going to use Hawaiian culture as a, as a tourism prop, which is even, I mean, that's, that's not unlike the mascot issue that, that we fight, right? Yeah. This whole idea of minimizing and almost, you know, trying to turn, you know, convince the rest of the world, oh, isn't this this primitive Hawaiian culture quaint? You know, come here and and, and we'll put on a show for you. And there are more and more Hawaiians are saying, hell no, no, I'm not doing it anymore. You know, look, we've danced for you before. Now we dance for us. We don't dance for you. So that's kind of where where some of this stuff. But I think I think people have to re please go online, and. 
look for you know there's a there's a bunch of facebook group pages uh you know uh, associated with with hawaii the the kue petitions which are the petitions that so many people signed uh, rejecting the annexation of hawaii there are tons of pages about mauna kea and and protecting the mountain and, and the whole bit you know, if you're listening to the show please Go to some of these sites. Go to these group pages. You know, join the group pages or share some of the the protests. There. The world has to know how many people are standing with the uh, with the Kanaka Maoli, with the Native Hawaiians, and, and or, or with the, the non-Native Hawaiians who oppose this building of this telescope. And and again, I have to say, and the, and the Hawaiians are the first ones to say this. We are not, and they say it all that we are not anti-science. We just believe that we're being pushed farther and farther on, on what is being shoved down our throat, even on, 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 our, on, our, on our lands, and, and in particular on our sacred lands, and we're just not taking it anymore. This, you know, we gave that inch, and you took inch after inch after inch. You put 13 telescopes on our mountain, and now you want to insult us even more by putting this huge telescope on our mountain. And we're saying, we don't just say no, we say hell no. So, I mean, it's... That's what the, 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 the Hawaiian people are, are fighting for and against. They're, 40, they're fighting for their mountain, and they're fighting against this development. And, and as a result, there are even more people stepping up um, and joining in the fight uh, you know, to resist what has been this illegal occupation of Hawaii all, all these years. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I encourage people to, to do their own research. Find out some of the truth. I mean... You can look back to the uh, to the apology resolution that was. I, I, I want to say it was. I want to say it was uh, 1993, and and I and I may have the date wrong, so I apologize if it's wrong. I don't know. But maybe you could see if you can find that, Jake. Uh, the apology resolution, and and this was a joint resolution of Congress, by the way, that apologized for the, you know, for the role the United States played in the illegal in the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Okay, it was 93. Well, uh, I'm usually pretty good with these dates, but every once in a while I'll get a blank. And, but anyway, so that was 1993, during the Clinton administration. Now, here's the irony of that. Do you know how the, uh, how, the ocup- how the annexation actually occurred? See, according to U.S. law, yeah. in order for land to be taken in by the United States, there has to be um, a request. So the, the, the people who, who are the, the legitimate government of a... Of, of a, of a land have to request to, uh, to be annexed, you know, and then again, it might be different over issues related to war, I guess, but, uh, but uh, so there's, uh, there's an annexation treaty that is negotiated between the, the owners of the land um, and the president of the United States. And then the annexation treaty has to be approved by two thirds of, of the Senate. This is a lot, a, a lot with this, uh, you know, like with other uh, Senate, uh, uh, the advice and consent rules with the, with the U.S. Constitution. So it isn't the House at all. It is just the Senate. And two-thirds of the Senate have to approve the treaty that the, that the President of the United States has entered into or has negotiated. That never happened. Why? Because the President of the United States at the time, Grover Cleveland, said, we don't even have a legit. this isn't a legitimate treaty. He threw it out. He literally threw it out. So when, ne- when he gets voted out of office, you've got McKinley... Uh, yeah, yeah, the guy who was killed here in Buffalo, by the way, uh, McKinley, who um, pushes to have the uh, Hawaii annexed without an annexation treaty. So how does he do it? He, he, he does it through a joint resolution of Congress, which has no authority. You know what joint resolutions of Congress are for? Naming holidays, doing apologies, passing resolutions, like the one condemning the, um, the president for, uh, for, asking, for saying these four the squad, the, the, these four progressive uh, women of color in Congress, that if they don't, if they hate the country, they should leave it, kind of stuff. So that's what a, that's what a a joint resolution is when both the House and the Senate pass some sort of, you know, uh, declaration, I guess. It, but they don't pass laws. Joint resolutions of Congress have no force of law. Now, when I say it doesn't have any force of law, you know how I can prove that? Because in 1993. When they passed the apology resolution, some of the Hawaiians tried to use that apology resolution um, in, in legal proceedings associated with land use. And, this, and it went to the Supreme Court. You know what the Supreme Court said? A joint, resolu- a, a joint resolution of Congress has no legal, uh, ha- has no power of law, has no force of law. Wait a second. That's how you claimed 
Hawaii in the first place. So yes. if a joint resolution of Congress has no force of law, then how the hell are you claiming to have any legitimate claim to Hawaii in the first place? You didn't have an annexation treaty. All you have, no. have is this illegal process that even congressmen were saying, look, you're just trying to come up with a way to do something that you know is illegal. You know, frankly, and that was a, a congressman, I think, from Texas who said that. They, I mean, the, the whole thing is, is an absolute sham. And, of course, you know, so you, you, you have you know, the United States talking on two sides of their face. On one hand, you know, they're saying they, 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 claim, they claim Hawaii through a joint resolution of Congress. And then when they apologize for it, the, the Supreme Court says, oh, no, a joint resolution has no, no force of law. I mean, this is the crap that, uh, you know, that happens. And, and, of course, Native people always get the shaft on this stuff. And, and, and I'm including, you know, Hawaiian people, not as a <laughs> not as a tribe of Indians, by the way, but uh, as native people. Um, and and I'm, I won't even use the word indigenous because that's still a word that I'm that I, I use it. But I, I struggle with that word because indigenous implies that we um, that in its definition of a of, of an indigenous people, it is it's a, it's a tied to this notion of uh, being colonized in the first place. That's what, you know, the definition of indigenous is. So it's, it's, kind, of a, it's, it's kind of a strange, um, you know, strange scenario. You can go put the, put the camera on me and it'll plug you in. Okay. Yeah. But um, underneath. All right. So, yeah. So, I mean, this is what we're, um, I mean, that, that's, this is how the whole absurdity um, of, of what the U.S. claim um, to Hawaii is. And, and, of course, the claim to Hawaii is what they base having the, the authority or the power to, to even do something as, you know, like put this telescope up. They, you know, and this is, you know, so whether we're talking about gaming or we're talking about um, land use of any kind, these are the battles that we have. These are the ongoing battles we have because states uh, try to assert authority that they don't legitimately have. And that's what we, that, that's what we invariably face. You know, we're almost at the bottom of the hour, so, uh, so Jake, why don't we go to a break here? Look, we opened up, by the way, with uh, Like the Mauna. That was by Brother Mikey uh, featuring uh, Pool Case, and uh, we're going to do another one by uh, Havani uh, Rios, and uh, this is a piece that she did um, in, her, in her support for the Mauna. So uh, we'll go out with this song, and we'll come back with uh, Ed Jindler and myself. This is Let's Talk Native. We'll be right back.
kukia imauna kukia i kukia imauna eku 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 I want to welcome you back. This is John Kane. I've got Ed Schindler in studio. Uh, that was uh, Havani uh, Rios. And, you know, that's a kind of a, a crossover of, you know, some traditional and uh, uh, contemporary, you know, uh, singing uh, in her support of, uh, of Mauna Kea. All right. I'm, I want to shift gears a little bit. First, let me go ahead and uh, thank my sponsors, by the way. Let me thank uh, uh, Ross and Holly John and the R RJE family of businesses. I want to thank Eric White and ERW Enterprises for supporting the show and, and others, including my good friend Ed here, who uh, who contributes to the show. Um, but also, you know, there's a couple of people who kind of remain anonymous. And, and, of course, Ed probably chooses to remain anonymous, too, but I can't help but mention <laughs> it anyway. But, but I, the, I, look, I support I, – I really appreciate you coming in and, and supporting the show with your presence as well. Uh, and, and I say the same to any of you who share the show and, and offer your comments. You know, yeah, we, we need financial support to do what we do and as we do some of the upgrades. And, and you're going to see some of those upgrades. They're going to become more apparent. We're going to do some, you know, some reconfiguring of our studio and some things. And, and of course, that stuff takes money. So we appreciate the support that you guys uh, do provide, you know, especially those of you who do something consistent on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, so I, I want to give a shout out. But I just want to give a shout out to those of you who share the show, like my wife, who shares the, the show on uh, pages. I, as I mentioned in, in a post this week, I keep getting banned from Facebook because if I share something and I, if I share it too often, um, it's it violates some sort of Facebook st standard, I guess. And so I, I ask you, those of you who watch the show, those of you who listen to the show, I ask you to do the sharing and so I can do less of it because the more I do it, the more susceptible I get to, uh, to, a, to being restricted or banned. And if I get banned, I can't, I can't post a show on our Facebook pages. So um, I'm not a, look, I'm not, you know, crying about getting banished. What I'm crying about is is not being able to do this show on on Facebook Live. So, um, but I also have suggested that I that I do want to look at using YouTube more. Maybe even doing some YouTube live streaming, if because if we're going to continue to see problems and and many people are having problems with Facebook and 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 some of their. Yeah, you know, some of their standards, um, some of the places that they have no standards, you know, and all of that stuff. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm concerned about some of the Facebook uh, controls as well. So, but uh, anyway, all right, so we're going to shift gears. The other, one of the other big protests that's happening is in Puerto Rico. And if you haven't been following this at all, um, the, the governor of Puerto Rico, Ricardo Rosello, um, has basically been outed for just some outrageous comments that he's been making on, uh, in, in some of his chats and his texts and his, you know, and, and some of them are just the most, look, some of them are just incredibly callous. I mean, almost making light of, of, of 
you know some of the people who died in at her in Hurricane Maria. I mean, making light of, light of the of the bodies that were piled up. I mean, I don't I don't know how you do that. I mean, I don't know how you do that. Period. But these are your own people, you know, you, you, you supposedly. But um, so I mean, he's made he's made comments about you know women and I mean just the most outrageous comments, the kind of stuff that warrants a resignation, and. Literally hundreds of thousands of people. They're expecting that they're, they're, when all is said and done, they may have a half a million people in the, in the streets calling for this guy's resig resignation. And it's getting ugly. I mean, and this is not um, Republicans and Democrats. This is grassroots. Some of these people voted for this guy. And, you know, and, they, and, and they're opposing him. I mean, they are, they are really, really you know, calling for this guy to be, to be removed. And so, I mean, I just... I mean, the guy needs to resign because he can't, he's not a credible elected official. If you hold these racist, misogynistic, you know, um, you know, sadistic views against your own people, regardless of, you know, of who they are. Um, and, and look, there've been, there've been some uh, recording artists who've gone out there and uh, have been a part of this, and and there's been you know many spontaneous protests where where it just won't use public media or uh, social media and said everybody go there. No leader, I mean they they rallied. I, I heard this one story where they all just got there and pitched in and threw money together to to get a sound system to show up there so they could do uh, you know do these big public de demonstrations. So, um, look, if this guy doesn't step down. He, he really risks um, there being violent clashes at this point. Of course, look, I could talk about protests in, in Hong Kong and that kind of stuff, but right now I'm talking about um, the indigenous people, the people who are really fighting um, the civil rights issues. And that's what's happening in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico has been, just like Hawaii, has been abused as a as a <clears throat> colonial territory, a territory that the United States has used their imperialistic views to you know to take take ownership of, legally or illegally, and, and Puerto Rico, we can argue whether it, it was legit for for the United States to take ownership of Puerto Rico as well, and that came out of the after Hawaii uh, out of the Spanish American conflict. So they take controls, and then of course it's like Hawaii; it's a tropical paradise. And so it gets exploited. It gets exploited by um, by a bunch of vulture capitalists who have destroyed the economy of Puerto Rico, and 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 walked away. I mean, including the president of the United States, Donald Trump. Actually, um, uh, I think he lost a bunch of money trying to do a golf course or, or a resort or something in, in Puerto Rico. So he's one of the guys who you know, who left a huge debt in, in Puerto Rico, and 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 he's emblematic of what so many other people have done there. So they, they've they've literally created a situation where where Puerto Rico where it's hard for Puerto Ricans to to live there. I mean the the unemployment rate is ridiculous. Um, there there are essentially no jobs for any young people there, and and of course the other thing that uh, that they have in common with, with Hawaii is this thing called the Jones Act, which makes it so that neither Hawaii nor Puerto Rico can have products show up. And ship directly to uh, to Puerto Rico or Hawaii, Hawaii without coming to the mainland first. So it makes products more expensive. You would think they're out they're they're out in that you know these navigational you know um, uh, you know lines where you would think you know especially Hawaii it's in the middle of the Pacific you think it'd be cheaper for for products to come from Asia, but nope, it isn't because they got to go all the way to to the west coast of the United States before they go back to Hawaii, and that's why a gallon of milk costs eight dollars. And yeah. and Puerto Rico has has similar situations. So, I mean, one of the things the United States could do right off the bat is lift is you know get rid of the Jones Act so the people there you know so the e economy can lift uh, you know uh, get peaked a little bit in Hawaii and uh, in Puerto Rico. But no, and and again, these are controlling business interests. The whole reason for the Jones Act is so these these um, companies that own these merchant ships can make sure they get they get their money. That they, they, you know, that uh, Hawaii and Puerto Rico can't have, you know, products coming direct without going through American, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, ships that, that carry an American flag. I mean, it's 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 all about control and it's all about money. And 
you know, part of what this Rosello is also accused of is corruption. And, you know, some of that's come out of in, in some of these these uh, these messages that have, uh, you know, that he he's apparently shared with some of his quote, quote unquote trusted advisors. So these massive protests, um, I expect these to be successful. I, I think Rosello's history. I think, you know, he's, you know, he's dead man walking as far as, you know, being the governor of, of, of Puerto Rico. And, and of course, you know, you're not going to fix Puerto Rico by ousting one person. You know, there's, there's systemic problems in Puerto Rico, and that's what's becoming more and more, more apparent um, in places, you know, like, like Puerto Rico. Now, the other thing, that, and, and, and I always got to bring this up, because uh, as you know, people like uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez and even going back to, you know, Sonia Sotomayor, there's still, you know, we, we talk about this idea of racism, people doing racist things um, and, and and this debate whether if you do racist things, are you a racist? Well, by and large, that's true. But there are some things that get done that are racist that um, that are really just born out of ignorance. One of the things is is referring to Puerto Ricans as immigrants. Puerto Rico is a place. So when you say Puerto Rican, that's like saying New Yorker. That's like saying Californian or Floridian or Texan. It isn't a... Although we could argue that Puerto Rican is a is an you could connect it with an ethnicity because there's you know it's a, there's an indigenous population that has lived there, but once it becomes a U.S. territory, rightly or wrongly, Puerto Ricans are not immigrants; they are American citizens. I mean, I'm not saying that all territories the United States has claimed. I mean, Samoa comes to mind. Um, are automatically considered U.S. citizens, but Puerto Rico is. So when I hear you know, NPR even referring to Sonia Sotomayor as the daughter of uh, Puerto Rican immigrants, I'm sorry, that's just racist. It's wrong, and because it's wrong, you create this sense that, 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 that she is of the other. It's that whole us and them thing. So when I hear Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez being told, go back to the country that you come from, and then have the, the president of the United States insult that pl- those countries that these women of color come from, realize that they're born here, so they're, you know, for, mo- for the most part, and then the country they come from is the United States. I, you know, even if it's Puerto Rico, that's the country is the United States. Now, and, and whatever problems exist in Puerto Rico are, is caused by the United States. Even the corruption of this guy. Look, we can condemn this. Well, yeah, but he, look, at he's Puerto Rican, so you can't blame the United States. Well, what do you think has corrupted these guys? What do you think has caused this misogyny? What do you think has caused this, this racism and this, this absolute, you know, unsensitive, you know, you know, bastard saying this, the stuff about, about people who died. And, and after you, you tried to cover up the amount of uh, the, the amount of deaths from her, you know, hurricane Maria too, to, to cater to the, to the president of the United States. I mean, look, it, it, it's sickening on so many different levels, but, I, but I have to, you know, I, you know, I've got to give a shout out to the, to the Puerto Rican people, the people of Puerto Rico um, for standing up and, and not letting this thing die down. And these, our protests seem to be escalating. Like I said, I think um, the Ro- Rosello's, um, you know, he's history. He just doesn't know it yet. I mean, and he thinks he can ride out these protests and, and, and somehow, you know, redeem himself. No, it's not going to happen. I don't think that, it, and look, somebody can call me up in a couple of weeks and say, oh, you were dead wrong on that one. I mean, I mean, it's like those, everybody who thought that Venezuela was going to topple uh, on, under the weight of itself. Yeah, you guys were all wrong there, too. But um, I don't think that uh, Ricardo Rosello is going to survive this thing. So that's the second protest I want to talk about. The third and final one I want to talk about is uh, our protests that are primarily happening in New York. But they're not only in New York. But they're primarily happening in New York. And those protests are over the killing of Eric Garner. Now, it's been, what, five, I think five years now since uh, Eric Garner was, uh, was murdered by the New York City Police Department. And I'm sorry, it, it is what it is. No, it wasn't a, um, uh, a split-second decision, you know, with, with somebody with their finger on the trigger that killed Eric Garner. It was Officer Pantaleo who choked him to death. He strangled him. He, put, he used a band 
chokehold, banned by the New York City police, and strangled a man to death. The last words that Eric Garner was able to utter out of, out of his restricted windpipe was, I can't breathe. I can't breathe has become one of the, one of the you know, the, the war cries of the Black Lives Matter movement. Again, Eric Garner was choked to death. And how do we know it? Because it's on freaking video. There's a video, not only of Pantaleo choking Eric Garner to death, but the other officers kneeling on his head and his chest and his body. I'm literally, this is a big man. So they, they choke him, and they all just kneel on him. And, okay, just in case you're wondering, well, why did they do this? You know what he was accused of? You know what he was accused of? He was only accused of selling cigarettes. And selling what they call Lucy's, which are individual cigarettes. And you know what? When they arrested, you know how many cigarettes they confiscated from him? None. He had no cigarettes. He wasn't selling cigarettes. Now, they accused him of selling cigarettes in the past. In fact, they, through their civil forfeiture rules, have taken thousands of dollars from him. He actually has a complaint. He had a complaint with the New York Depart Police Department for money that the, the police officer had stolen from him. And they said, well, as far as we're concerned, you got this money from selling cigarettes. Even if they never you know, it didn't associate the cash they had with selling cigarettes, so these civil forfeiture rules, which, which really allows police departments to literally just take stuff, even without asserting and establishing necessarily a, um, a, a cr criminal conviction. But in this situation, Eric Garner had broken up a fight. The police show up, and they try to arrest him for selling cigarettes, which he isn't even doing. And you know what, you know what should happen if you get caught selling cigarettes in New York City? You should get a ticket. You should be issued a fine, you know, or maybe a warrant to show up in court. But no, they decided they're going to physically accost this guy and take him into, uh, you know, into custody. And he's saying, and he's saying, look, you guys, are, why are you always going to come harassing me? Pant Pantaleo sneaks up behind him and then throws him in a chokehold and strangles Eric Garner to death. Again. Not not a hair trigger, not like, well, you know, not the, the other standards that the police officers so often get away with where they say, well, we thought there was an imminent, in, imminent threat and, you know, I had to make a split second decision and I and I fired my weapon. No, there's no weapon fired here. This is a white man choking a black man with the assistance of, of a bunch of other white people. Well, and actually, I think there was even a couple of officers who may have been of color. I don't know. But this is the legacy of so many police departments, including the New York City Police Department. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mentioned that. Do you remember when we did the show on, on uh, uh, talking about the Declaration of Independence? Yes. Remember how I said one of the charges that, that Jefferson uh, made against King George was that um, his, uh, his soldiers had committed murder against the, the colonists, right? They committed murder. And then the king has um, uh, constructed mock trials mock trials to clear their soul, these soldiers of murder. Oh, yes. How ironic is that, that there's these things going on? And most of these things never go to trial. But, but let's think about the reason these protests are happening now is because William Barr, the yeah. Trump-appointed uh, U.S. Attorney General, decided, based on some grand jury testimony uh, and, a, and, a, and a sitting grand jury, that they could not bring a criminal charge against uh, this officer Pantaleo. Why? They said, we think the burden of proving intent is too high and that we can't pull it off. We, we can't prove that Officer Pantaleo intended to kill him. But people have to understand that, that was not, <laughs> there was not a gunshot. There was not a, any kind of weapon whatsoever. Or a split-second decision nor a split second decision nor was anyone else nor the public in any way endangered there was no danger okay and and look i don't know how it it, it the definition of lethal force is force that could kill somebody 
That, this yeah. was lethal force. There was no justification for the use of, of lethal force. And to say, what, that he accidentally choked him to death? You choked a human being with your bare hands. In this case, his bare forearm. You choked a human being. To death. That is it's to death. It, with the last words coming you how do you know he couldn't breathe? Because he said it. The words, the last words he was able to utter out of his mouth on videotape was and, I can't breathe. And the other thing was the bar said there was no real proof of intent. They could they that's what he said. He said we couldn't prove malicious intent. We couldn't prove that this officer intended to kill him. And then they came up with all these these harebrained scenarios. Well, you know, he, um, in the struggle, his arm shifted. Uh, what he tried to do, what they call uh, um, a seat belt hold, which is legal, which is where you get one arm under, uh, when you grab him, you get one arm under the arm. So, you know, a seat belt goes over the shoulder. Well, the whole idea is to, is to have a, uh, a hold that goes over the shoulder and under the arm, so you can't choke. That's not what but he had. It, he didn't look like he was trying to get that hole. That that move is strictly for him to immobilize. Well, choking somebody is clearly intended to, uh, you know, to to it's, make somebody you know, pass to, out or die. That's to harm them. Yeah. So and yeah, he wasn't trying to, you know, trying to control him. He was trying to harm him. He was inflicting damage, and and he killed him. Now, of course. This is the Trump appointed you know uh, attorney general who um, this is essentially uh, this grand jury is essentially the mock trial, the same mock trials that uh, that Jefferson complained about, right? That's what this is. You clear people of murder. Do you know the guys who killed Tamir Rice, the 12 year old who had a who had an airsoft gun playing in the park? They didn't get charged either. The guys who killed Mike Brown, they didn't get charged either. The guy who killed uh, Freddie what's his name Fred. Um, um, John Blank, sorry. Um, in Missouri. Well, that was Mike Brown. Uh, no, the, Mike the guy Brown. they killed in the back of the 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 the, the police wagon there, the ones that they um, they they made him follow. You know, Gray. Freddie Gray, right? They didn't get charged either. The, here's the crazy part: the only officer that has ever, that, or, well, the only officer who's been convicted of murder is the black officer in Minnesota. Well, and he's not the only one. There's very few others. But and who? What did he? He killed a white woman from Australia. And you know, and he he's considered uh, again one of the others, right? Because he was a he's an immigrant who who got a job as a police officer in Minnesota. So they convict him of murder. Now this guy admits that it, that it was a mistake to pull the trigger. But but the defense that most of these cops have is I had to make a split second. She she came upon the car and and already she thought his. Uh, partner who was in the driver's seat was at risk because she just came to the window and and his his reaction was to pull his, his revolver and uh, uh, his his gun and, and shoot her. I mean, there's no question that it was a bad shoot, but I don't think this guy had any ill uh, ill intent. He was he didn't say, "Well, I'm going to kill a white woman today." I think <laughs> you there is clearly more intent on, uh, associated with with Pantaleo, who is that other you know racist uh, you know. Uh, there's other things in his record that suggest this thing. So, you know, and the crazy part is the family is really, wasn't even, their their main issue wasn't calling for Pantaleo and the other five officers involved with killing the, you know, their family member, the you know, mother kill, having her son killed. Wasn't having them convicted, but just not let them be police officers anymore. Let's at least get these folks off the, off the force. I mean, they killed with their bare hands. They physically, they didn't shoot. They didn't stab. They didn't, they, they didn't even bludgeon him. No. They choked him to death. They suffocated him. <sighs> On videotape. And here's the crazy part is, uh, Orda who is the young, the, the young man who, who filmed this thing, who caught it on his cell phone, he's the only person who was, uh, who, who, who was ever charged in, uh, in, in this whole scenario. He's the only person. They arrested him, and they, and they built up some trumped-up gun charge or something, some old charge. They, so he goes to jail, but the cops who killed Eric Garner? And, and again, I, I got to... I, I got to bring this up because this is one of the things that's not talked about. 
He didn't have any cigarettes on him. He wasn't selling cigarettes. So the cops could have gone up there and, and said, look, uh, we got a call. You were selling cigarettes. And they could see that he wasn't selling cigarettes. And the idea that they, that they showed up with a, with a whole crew of police officers to take him into custody for something they could have just issued a ticket for, an appearance ticket, and with a court could have assessed a fine for it. You know, and again, when I say selling cigarettes, what, what we're talking about here is what they call Lucy's, which is a common thing in New York, by the way. You can go into almost any bar, what they call bodega in New York, and if the proprietor himself isn't doing it, they usually have some sort of, you know, look the other way because somebody, and what Lucy is, is an individual cigarette. We're not talking about a, um, you know, a, a, a hand-rolled cigarette or, you know, these are cigarettes that are being sold individually. And they aren't necessarily illegal cigarettes. They aren't even necessarily, you know, the quote-unquote smuggled cigarettes. By the way, the Tax Foundation, a, you know, a, a think tank and a, and a, and a group who um, uh, studies uh, tax policy in the United States, they determined through, through some other organization they're working with that the majority of cigarettes smoked or consumed in New York State are smuggled in. It's like 56%, almost 60% of the cigarettes that are consumed by smokers in, in New York State, including New York City and Staten Island, <laughs> are smuggled in. Now, they, they are... And I asked, I called the tax, I talked to some of the folks from, from the American Tax Foundation, and I said, is, are they talking about native cigarettes? I said, oh, no, no, native cigarettes aren't even considered smuggled. They're talking about people who, who drive to the Carolinas or just drive, you know, drive out of the state and bring, bring cigarettes in wherever they go. I mean, it could be, could be Vermont, could be Massachusetts, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, I don't know, but, um, wherever it's even a little bit cheaper. Because you have to keep in mind, in New York City, there's not only... The, the state sales, uh, sales tax or the excise tax, New York City puts another $10 a carton on top of, on top of that. I mean, it's, you know, it's, again, it's an absurd level of taxation for, for people who smoke. By the way, when I say people who smoke, I got to clear that up. People who smoke cigarettes. Because if you smoke to, uh, um, pipe tobacco or if you smoke cigars, so if you're a luxury connoisseur of tobacco, the same taxes don't apply. They only apply to the cheap man's um, tobacco products, cigarettes. So, okay. so it's it's the you, again, wealthy people aren't being taxed for their, their, their for their high end tobacco consumption, but but the common man, the street level guy. So, what Eric Garner was accused of. And, and look, he may have had a, an old charge associated with he, of selling individual cigarettes, which is a very commonplace thing in New York City. And they killed him for it. I mean, they, this is state policy. And this goes to the governor. This goes to the mayor. And by the way, if you're wondering where these protests are happening, they're happening in Staten Island, where, which is where Eric Garner was killed. They're happening at City Hall. In front of the uh, the mayor's offices, it's it's these protests are happening at, at police departments. So, if you're in New York or if you have an opportunity to weigh in again, whether you this uh, whether you weigh in on a protest over the the 30 meter telescope on Mauna Kea, or supporting the, the the people in Puerto Rico calling for the ouster of their their corrupt twisted uh, governor, or if you're um, going to join in. And it isn't even just about Black Lives Matter. This is about mock trials protecting murderers, including Officer Pantaleo and the five officers that the New York City police won't even name. Weigh in. Please weigh in. Find, you know, find out more. But if you see a group page or if you, you see a Twitter post, you see something on Instagram or any other part of social media, offer your support to the protesters. Offer your support for justice, whether it's in Hawaii, Puerto Rico, or in New York City, or, or or any place where there has been this rash of you know uh, unarmed people being killed by police officers, none more egregious than the murder of Eric Garner, the murder of Eric Garner.
that's our show for today, folks. Ed, we'll see you on uh, on Tuesday. We'll be back here on Tuesday night. Um, and I'll probably do – I'm not going to New York this uh, this coming week, so I may do a show, my my New York show from here. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But we'll see you back here on Tuesday. Thank you for listening. And, again, search out these protests and, uh, and, and offer your support to, the, to the, this, these grassroots movements that are trying to uh, pursue justice and, and participate. I appreciate it. Yahweh. Yahweh. I think people should consider